Hey guys, this is me, Nick Benson, and I'm going to talk about how could we improve the Suicide Squad movie. So a lot of people liked it, a lot of people didn't. Um, this isn't as much me talking about... It's not a review, per se. I'm not going to be directly saying, I liked it for this, these reasons, I disliked it for these reasons, and here's my final rating of the movie. Um, I will be talking about what I liked and didn't like about the movie, but when I'm talking about what I liked and didn't like about the movie, it'll be more along the lines of, here is how I would have improved upon it, and I may give a reason why I'm improving upon it. And things that I don't mention for improvement are probably things that I felt were fine with the movie, to where I didn't think they need to be improved. So... How to improve Suicide Squad. I liked the fact that they had mobs that the Suicide Squad could fight. There were enemies that were in their path, and they had to combat these enemies in order to reach their goal. And it wasn't just one big bad villain. A lot of superhero movies have the problem of one big bad villain, which means you have a lot of empty space in your film where there isn't a lot of action going on. Like, if a villain doesn't have minions, then what does your hero have to face in the meantime? Now, you can throw in, like, saving civilians in between shots. You can have background stuff that happened before the story to help establish um, natural disasters. Things that are unrelated challenges, but they're everyday challenges, so you understand that a hero would have to, like, face those things. But with Suicide Squad not really being focused on being a group of people who help, like, save and rescue people anyways, a lot of those wouldn't have worked, so I understand why they wouldn't be in there. And you also just need, like, a threat where anyone would want to, like, defend themselves or fight back. So having, like, their proto-zombie thing is fine. I was totally fine with that. Um, having the proto-zombies be just normal guys with guns, more or less, that just looked weird, that was kind of lame. Um, so, spoilers, a little late for that, um, <laughs> but I'll probably put that in like the title of this video and in the description, that there are spoilers for the Suicide Squad movie. The zombie mobs that the Suicide Squad fought could have had powers. Um, they were... Normal people who were kissed by the Enchantress and turned into these zombie slaves who were going around capturing people and I guess also killing them. I suppose they were doing both. I actually can't recall seeing any of the zombie mobs killing anyone other than like the Suicide Squad members who we later learned the reason why they were attacking the Suicide Squad and the soldiers that they were with was because they were after Rick Flagg. So they were just kind of doing missions for the Enchantress. But anyways, the Enchantress is like an all-powerful character, and she could have done more than just turn people into brainwashed slaves, I imagine. She could have used her magic abilities to have just given them random powers, and that would have been cool. To see the Suicide Squad members have to deal with people that have, like, basic abilities, like blasting ice out of their hands, or... Maybe you have someone who can, like, turn intangible, but not, like, permanently, only for, like, a few seconds at a time. And we get to see these characters who normally have an upper hand against, like, a normal adversary have to be clever and think of a way to, like, fight through these enemies. Um, a big thing that I see in movies is special effects, superpowers are normally given to the big bad and, like, the heroes. But they're not really given to minions. Minion characters are normally basic. Even Ultron's minions in Avengers 2 Age of Ultron were just, like, throwaway robots. They're practically tinker toys when, like, fighting against heavy hitters like Thor and the Hulk. But they didn't have any, like, real unique powers. You want in my opinion, the minions to not have, like, the big reality-altering powers, but to at least have, like, 
a C-list X-Men power. You know, like... <laughs> Because that would make sense why they were minions. They're just farther down in the hierarchy. But it would also make sense how they're an actual threat because they have some kind of power or ability. Deadshot, with his ability to just perfectly hit any target, when fighting against zombies, isn't really threatened. You know, there's nothing really <laughs> that he can't handle in that situation as long as he has enough ammunition. So... <laughs> You're not really on the edge of your seat when these characters who have like these great skills or high level abilities are fighting people who are essentially humans that just look weird. You know, they could have had better minions for them to fight. Um, that being said, with me saying that the minions were too weak, I also have to say that the villain, like the main villains, were too powerful. Enchantress is a witch whose powers aren't defined well in the Suicide Squad movie. Uh, which means, essentially, she's a witch who can do anything. <laughs> she was given too much power. Um, because Enchantress could, like, possess bodies, turn people into slaves, tap into people's minds, see what their desires are, give them visions and illusions, teleport, she was overpowered. She could literally do whatever the writer wanted her to do. And it got to the point where Enchantress was so powerful, it made me consider, and spoiler for Batman v Superman, if Superman was actually there, what would he have done to Enchantress? And in reality, it seems like nothing. It seems like he would have died. <laughs> Superman in the comics is, like, one of his weaknesses is that he's affected by magic in the same way anyone else is. He doesn't have some special invulnerability to magic in the same way he does bullets. So if Enchantress wanted to, like, teleport Superman into the sun, let's say she can do that. She can teleport herself. She can do all this other stuff. I couldn't see why she couldn't do it. <laughs> that being said, she didn't do it to grab Amanda Waller. So maybe she can teleport other people. Oh, wait, <laughs> you remember when she grabbed that file from Turan? It's not like she can't teleport objects <laughs> with her. So it may just be close-range teleportation. Even then, teleporting Superman to the sun actually would just help him. He would be more powerful than he would like. Not even be godlike level to the point where he could, like, whoop Enchantress. You know, like, that would be her messing up. A matter of fact, teleporting Superman anywhere doesn't really whoop Superman. But I am getting off topic. If she had a spell that could just instantly kill someone, or, like, turn you into a frog or something, Superman isn't immune to that. <laughs> he would just instantly die or be turned into a frog. My point is, if you have an enemy that's so powerful that Superman, a guy who has, a lot of people say, like, all the powers in the world, really, Superman isn't as strong as everyone, like, really feels he is, like, power-wise. He has a lot but he doesn't have, like, the reality-bending powers. His powers are so powerful that he's, like, on the verge of being reality-bending. And he does do some stuff that really doesn't make any sense. But he's not, like, Dr. Fate reality-bending. And that's what I'm saying. Enchantress is so far gone with her abilities to manipulate reality that if she's, like, an enemy where you'd say, like, she could give Superman trouble, then you can't have... The Suicide Squad <laughs> successfully whoop Enchantress. <laughs> like, and they didn't give Suicide Squad, like, a cast of characters that were on Enchantress's level. Enchantress by herself is too much for them to face. And then you're going to have the gall to introduce a character who has giant tentacle arms that can literally, like, rip through you and turn you into paste as Enchantress's brother and right-hand CGI man. And you're telling me he couldn't kill the Suicide Squad? Suicide Squad, when you look at it, is a woman who is essentially a normal woman, for the most part, like, in physical ability. Sure, um, I know in the comics she has, like, a gymnastics background. So, ooh, I'm sorry, a gymnast. A, gym <laughs> a gymnast woman <laughs> with, like... Maybe high-level combat ability. I'll give her, like, that. And she is intelligent. Like, I'm not saying Harley Quinn doesn't have a lot of, like, positive qualities. 
But Enchantress and her brother claim that they were literally considered gods during the time in which they were on Earth before. So, whatever. Super smart combat gymnasts versus gods. Okay, dead. Who else? Deadshot, who can land any shot. Okay. Deadshot, like, never misses. But that isn't, like, a power. That's just him being skilled. You know, like... (laughs) Skills, to me, don't match up with powers all the time. (laughs) And there are certain times where, like, yeah, this character is so skilled that I could see them fighting someone with abilities realistically. Like how Batman has a contingency plan for, like, most of the members of the Justice League. I don't believe Batman can, like, directly fight members of the Justice League for real. But if he's already planned ahead and his opponents haven't, there's not much his opponents can do um, because of his skill. Deadshot <laughs> doesn't, like, snipe the Enchantress. He's not, like, <laughs> using his skill to try and, like, kill her without her ever noticing him. He, like, goes out with all the other Suicide Squad members to fight her directly. Like, I think that's my biggest problem with it. You can have a team of people who don't really have, like, real powers, except for El Diablo. He had the he was the only one who had real powers, to me, because Killer Croc is like a crocodile man, and that's still a crocodile man fighting a god. <laughs> I'm still not okay with that. But El Diablo had, like, a spirit. He had, like, a being within him that he could transform into and manipulate fire. That's a power. That's... The spirit he turned into was essentially like a demon. Like, demon versus gods? I I can buy that more. I can buy... (laughs) It's not just a skill. That's, like, a real power where... Like, when El Diablo burns up, like, half a building and kills, like, all those enchantress, like, zombie minions, I was like, hmm, if El El Diablo just turned around, he would kill the entire Suicide Squad. None of them have a defense for that. None of them. (laughs) Like, that's how powerful he is. And they give him, like, that level of power. He essentially carries that whole team. Um, He's even the one who defeats Enchantress's brother, more or less. Enchantress's brother essentially gets whooped by a bomb. A bomb that is placed under him by someone underwater who is effectively not killed by that bomb somehow, because that bomb only blasts upwards and would not kill the person who placed it, because none of that force goes back down, nor does it cave in to the sewer with... It does. It breaks the floor. There's How does the force not kill the people under the water? I don't get that. There are, like, a few things in this movie that I don't get that are, like, logic-based that just don't make logical sense that I would like to change. But I guess my main thing for this one is they should have had a weaker villain or they should have had a stronger Suicide Squad. Or the Suicide Squad should have approached defeating the villain differently from the way they did. Because based on the power set given, the Suicide Squad was too weak to really defeat Enchantress in like a forward fight. It should have been a more planned affair. Or it should have been just a stronger team. They they needed at least like two or three more El Diablo level heroes, and I would have bought fighting like two gods more realistically. I, I know that realistic isn't like the best word to use for that, but they just were not top tier enough to really do <laughs> what they were like trying to show them doing. So my two complaints so far have been Enchantress is too god tier for the Suicide Squad and that the mobs that the Suicide Squad fought were too, like, citizen level for the Suicide Squad. So Enchantress's minions were too weak, but Enchantress was too powerful. My next complaint would probably have to be... Well, not complaint, like, suggestion... Um, Oh, wait. Yeah, I should phrase these as suggestions. Because, again, this isn't supposed to be a review. This is just supposed to be, like, how the movie could have been better. Enchantress's minions should have been stronger. Enchantress should have been, like, powered down. 
she should have had like a specific power set where she can do a b and c and a b and c can be like these amazing wonderful powers but it shouldn't have just been like open where she could do literally anything <laughs> because then she can't be beat so they should have depowered enchantress a little bit and they should have made enchantress's minions more powerful okay so my next big complaint are just like things that don't make sense character wise um, Deadshot should have shot Harley Quinn in um, her br necklace. She wore like a metal pudding necklace, which you could argue is made out of gold or just looks like it is. It doesn't matter. When Amanda Waller said, you'll be free and you'll have your daughter back, all you gotta do is kill Harley Quinn. Deadshot should have aimed, shot her right in that necklace, and I know that in real life, shooting her in the metal necklace would still kill her. But for the movie's sake, Harley Quinn does the fake thing that she did where she pretends like the shot killed her and she like is clutching onto the rope. But then we get to see the scene where the Joker like pulls her up and he looks devastated because he thinks that like Harley Quinn's dead and then Harley Quinn reveals like, ta-da, like I'm not actually dead. And we see the bullet stuck within like her pudding necklace or something like it got stuck that would have been great especially if they established it with an earlier scene of like her getting shot at by like enchantress's minions and it like hitting like a different area of the pudding necklace and having it stop because then that would have established that it was bulletproof and when the scene with deadshot shooting her and you at first not knowing that like he shot her in the pudding necklace on purpose, like you don't know that, then it set up this tension where it makes it seem as if Harley Quinn has been killed by Deadshot, because Deadshot realistically, I feel, would have taken that chance of killing Harley for his daughter. But then Deadshot like purposely doesn't kill her, so when Amanda Waller gives him his freedom, like, he smiles, but the smile is kind of like a sly smile because he knows that he didn't really kill Harley. I feel like that would have been better than him saying, <laughs> I missed. That was such a lame part of the movie. What real relationship does he have with Harley? Um, earlier on in the film, there's a scene where it seems like Deadshot's trying to team up with Harley because he knows that like the Joker is going to free her. But then the Joker frees Harley, and Deadshot tells her, like, no, don't go. Don't, like, go to the Joker. And then Harley just leaves Deadshot in the dust. This scene is right before the scene where Amanda Waller says, you shoot her, you get everything you want. <laughs> so that sets the floor for, like, all right, Harley Quinn has left me. She's not going to, like, help me escape with the Joker um, Amanda Waller is literally giving me the thing that I wanted to get from working with Harley. So now, not only do I get what I want, but I also can get Harley back for just leaving me behind. Bam! That's what, <laughs> the bam is him shooting the gun. Like, that's it. And if he wanted to leave her alive, that's what the whole, like, hidden her in the pudding necklace thing is. So it would have worked out, like, on multiple angles, and they could have even had Deadshot just leave. Like, <laughs> he's like, okay, you're, Deadshot is free now. And then that would have been game. <laughs> you know, because really, Deadshot wasn't needed for the end fight. He shoots the bullet, and the scene with Deadshot at the end, do I feel like that was necessary? No, I don't. <laughs> Um, especially when you learn what Deadshot, like, truly wants in life. Which I feel like that scene should have been different. The scene that shows what Deadshot really wanted in life, and what Harley really wanted in life, should have shown what everyone really wanted. It should have shown, uh, Captain Boomerang with his fluffy pink unicorns. It should have shown Katana, maybe with her husband. Um, but it only focused on the characters that the movie felt were the main characters. And they could have just ended it off with Diablo and, like, his realization that, like, it was an illusion. But it also could have ended 
with Katana's realization, because I think she also, since it was related to, like, death, would have realized, like, oh, like, I've lost this, and I'm not just going to get it back. They both learned the same lesson from that, so they could have both snapped out of it and have to snap everyone else out of theirs, um, which is what El Diablo ended up doing, but he really only talks to, like, the main characters. It's weird. So... <laughs> I think they should have shown everyone's fantasy who was present for that scene, and I think that would have actually been, like, better. I feel like Suicide Squad falls into the trap of saying Deadshot and Harley Quinn are the main characters, rather than just exploring all the characters. And I know that that sounds like a mess, the concept that they try and make every character seem like an equal. But as someone who's, like, seen Suicide Squad multiple times... I watch it each time to watch a different character's arc, to look at a different character's story. And I like the concept of a movie that you can watch over and over again and follow a different character's path throughout the movie as you go. Um, and that can only really be done if you don't try so hard to focus on two cast members of like a multicast film. <laughs> and the two characters that I honestly feel are the strongest in Suicide Squad are El Diablo and Katana. I love their stories and how they're explored within the film. And I honestly feel like they could have their own films. Um, a El Diablo prequel movie would be great. And a Katana sequel I actually would like to see, like, where she is after the events of Suicide Squad. Both great concepts um, that I feel like may or may not be explored in the future. So, oh, and about, like, the dream sequences that we actually were shown. Um, I'm fine with Harley's. Harley's was done, for, like, quite well. I feel like that makes sense for her. Um, Deadshot's. So Deadshot doesn't actually want to be with his daughter. He doesn't desire for him and his daughter to be together. He just wants to kill Batman. Enchantress didn't say, like... What is something that I could, like, do for you? Just, like, any whim. She said, I can show you exactly what you want. Meaning, like, this is what you truly want over everything else. And you would think that killing Batman is an ends to a means to get to what he really wants, his daughter. But when you look at it as, like, this is what you really want, then he just really wants to kill Batman. He doesn't really want his daughter. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of people will defend that scene by saying, like, no, because if he killed Batman, then he'd be with his daughter. Then that still makes it sound like what he really wants is his daughter and not killing Batman. But that scene doesn't end with Deadshot, <laughs> like, hugging his daughter. That scene ends just with him removing the coat and Batman's dead. And there's even a scene right afterwards where Deadshot, in a very deadpan voice, says, I killed the bat. What? Like, <laughs> it sounds like that's all he wants is to kill Batman. That's ridiculous. At the same time, though, I want to see that movie. Like, <laughs> not necessarily Deadshot winning, but a movie that has, like, Batman and Deadshot facing off. Maybe not the movie being focused on that alone. It can be like a subplot, and it could be a movie where Batman is fighting many of his rogues, because that actually is something I really like to highlight about this movie. The scenes that had Batman were rather great. I actually would really love if, like, the beginning of the Suicide Squad movie, where they're just going over all the case files, was the whole movie. <laughs> That was, that was amazing. So, essentially, another thing that I feel like they could have done with Suicide Squad is have it have not really been a Suicide Squad movie, but just been, like, a villain movie. Here are all these villains, here are their origins, and here is how they got caught by their, like, respective hero. The movie would act as an introduction to, like, these heroes' rogues galleries, and you'd be able to talk about, like small smaller villains not like the really huge threats villains that like you wouldn't have time to explore in a film 
like where they could get a whole film to themselves, but villains that you could, like, they still have great stories to tell. They're just not feature-length stories. So you tell their stories within, like, a compact amount of time, and you get to show how that villain, like, grew, how they were at their prime, and how they were when they were, like, captured by a hero. And the hero isn't the focus of the story, and it's not just a single hero. So I wouldn't want a Batman movie where all it is is they explore every Batman villain, and at the end, Batman catches all of them. But I would like a movie where they explore, like, a ton of DC villains, and you see different DC heroes have to defeat these villains after you've seen these villains rise. Um, because... Those are great stories. Like <laughs> those mini stories to show the files for like the Suicide Squad were great. And like a movie doesn't have to be like two hours. It doesn't have to be like two and a half hours. You can have like an hour and a half movie and it explores like all these villains. And it can have like a storybook kind of context, because that's what Suicide Squad had. It's like, here are their files, and their files tell you all these things. And then when they were done looking at the files, it's like, that was the end of the files. <laughs> you know, I would have really enjoyed that. That would have been interesting. And you can end a movie like that by having, like, there's a breakout at Arkham or something, or, like, everyone broke out at Bell Rev. And then, <laughs> you know, like what they did with Suicide Squad, when Harley Quinn got broken out at Bell Rev. <laughs> like... It's really good. It's a really good way to introduce all these villains, and then to show these villains and like their prime, and then have them be taken by the hero, and then you know the villain has like unfinished business that they have to do, but they've been defeated, and then let these villains back out into the world. We won't know when we'll see like these villains again, but we know that they have like these goals that they want to accomplish, and here's them trying to like accomplish these goals. That would be a great movie. Like, <laughs> there are so many things um, that they can do with a DC villain movie. And I just feel that Suicide Squad did a lot of good. And it did like some things I didn't approve of. But it wasn't the best thing they could have done with it. Um, so the main ways that Suicide Squad could have improved essentially transform Suicide Squad into a different film. Like, not just, like... These aren't small incremental changes. A lot of the changes that I've, like, mentioned would be, like, entirely different movies. I mean, not, not all of them are like that. If they depowered Enchantress just to where we knew exactly what she could do, that, I don't think, would have, like, completely changed the movie. It just, in my opinion, just would have made the movie better. If the minions of Enchantress had, like, C-list powers, I think that just would have made the movie better. It wouldn't have made it, like, a, it would have, to me, made it a completely different movie when I think about it. It just would have been cooler to have seen. Also, more of Rick Flagg's men, if any of them, uh, should have died. They should have, <laughs> because having the seals like, survive all the things that the Suicide Squad survived, um, doesn't really help the case that the Suicide Squad are needed. Um, also, I think Amanda Waller should have sent the Suicide Squad in and said, like, Mission A, save the target. Mission B, stop Enchantress. Because if you pay attention, the Suicide Squad's mission is never to stop Enchantress. They're actually lied to about the situation that's going on in the city. Their mission was always just to save Amanda Waller. And then when Amanda Waller was taken by Enchantress, the mission was then to save Amanda Waller from the Enchantress. So, <laughs> you know, like, it's just weird that you would send the Suicide Squad in to, like, save Amanda Waller. Other than for the fact that they're, like, normal soldiers wouldn't cut it. We have to send the best of the best in. But the minions that they were fighting were essentially like normal people. Amanda Waller makes a comment that's like, man, to make an army of soldiers that can take multiple headshots and they still are like able to keep kicking, that's like a powerful army. But do they really take multiple headshots? How many of those, 
like zombie characters to the Suicide Squad fight, where it's like, oh man, you know, they really took like a full clip, like Deadshot is like, bam, 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 just killing them. And are you gonna tell me Deadshot has like special like zombie one hit kill bullets? Uh, you can tell me whatever you want. I don't feel like that's the case. Um, they just weren't as powerful as Amanda Waller was like selling them to be. And if they were, it probably would have been a more interesting movie. <laughs> like, again, I liked Suicide Squad. I saw Suicide Squad multiple times. But there were many things that the movie could have improved on. Was the movie itself, like, a perfectly fine film? It was fine. It was, like, not a bad movie. You could argue that it was a good movie. Um, but I wouldn't say it was a great movie. That's, like, my scale of, like, how Suicide Squad is. Uh, so in the end, I did kind of give a review of Suicide Squad. But I hope I also gave ways that I feel the movie could have improved. Um, I just do feel like the movie suffered from its hero-villain dynamic. Um, the people who we were supposed to root for just at times seemed too powerful for what they were fighting. And then the people we're supposed to root against at times seemed too powerful for our protagonist to really handle in the way that the movie presented it. So that is my impression of the Suicide Squad. What did you guys think? Post in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching, and tune in for more content.